So this is the first week of three where we are restricted to just four games around as teams get rested. Big match coming up on Saturday night. Is it a preview of the final already? That's the Hurricanes hosting the Chiefs. The way the table looks at the moment, Blues on top. Hurricanes and Brumbies. All three teams have won six games, but the Blues and the Brumbies have played a game more. Chiefs in fourth, Rebels in fifth. Reds and Drua and Highlanders wrap up the top eight. And the Crusaders sitting there 11th out of 12. Just one win, of course, but... They had the bye over the weekend. Justin, welcome back, mate. Thanks, Marty. Good to be back. Uh, uh, the Blues, let's start with them, shall we? Is this typical of them, belting crap teams by 50? Convince us that this team this year, though, is for real. Well, I think basically what they're doing is, um, again, I think like I've spoken about this year, they're, they're, they're trending in the right direction. Uh, they're basically tackling each scenario as it's presented to them. Um, I think quite clearly very well. Uh, you know, they're getting the results when they need them. Uh, the one hiccup against the Hurricanes was obviously a little bit of a faux pas with the bench selection. They got bitten by that. Regardless of the fact that we, I don't feel that they've hit their straps yet and haven't hit pinnacle performance, um, I certainly feel that they are getting the job done when they need to. Uh, and they had quite a few changes and gave some opportunities out. And obviously, Peter Feta meeting, um, missing. I thought Harry Plummer stepped up really nicely. Funaki got an opportunity and many others as well. And uh, they were good. They went about their method and put the force away with consummate ease. And that's all they needed to do on the night. 10,000 crowd there. The Warriors are going to get double that and more again this weekend and sell out when they play Manly. What is it telling us about, what, is Auckland a rugby league town right now? Well, there's obviously a lot of, uh, I guess, interest being generated by the performance of the Warriors at the moment. And many people are saying about the fact that they are e easily selling out their stadium, not just selling it out. So there, there is obviously, um, particularly in Auckland, a lot of people going to those games for, for that very reason. They are they're very much intrigued by the Warriors and they're very much wanting to support them. Uh, I certainly still feel that rugby has its place in New Zealand and it has its uh, good core group of fans that want to see rugby games every weekend and not rugby league. Uh, but obviously, I think we just have to have a little bit of a look at our scheduling and make sure that when we have big blockbuster games like Crusaders, Hurricanes have a great contest and everybody's talking about the game and saying how good it was, that the following weekend we pretty much don't have four dead rubbers because that stifles the momentum and it takes away interest and we've got to be smarter than that to make sure that we can compete with the likes of the Warriors when they are going very, very well and uh, demanding supporters to go along because of their performances. Yeah, look, it's three weekends where four teams rest every weekend. Is that too many? Because, you know, especially our players, they get rested anyway with their, you know, all-black duties and when they can't play more than five games and so forth. I mean, is, is, is three rounds, seven, eight, nine, too much of this? You get the feeling it is if we again have what we had last weekend and I think the important thing is, is in the scheduling we look at being a bit more creative you know I, I certainly feel that there's an opportunity maybe to rather than have buy rounds um, have a couple of rounds where you elongate the week and you have rugby from Thursday through to Tuesday night Go on. and what that does buddy is that gives the opportunity for big turnarounds from the week before for teams to get sort of eight nine ten days rest and then play, and, and yet we as viewers get to watch rugby every night of the week, including into Monday, Tuesday night, and, and I think that that then competes with what, for example, Rugby League did during the Easter weekend when they had games pretty much Thursday right through. Um, there was a game on Monday night as well. So, yeah, I, I feel that the buy rounds aren't quite working because we're, we're not scheduling properly if we're not going to do something like Elon Gun, elongate the week and make it really interesting and have people watching rugby for five or six days on the bounce, then we have to make sure that we have blockbuster games in those buy rounds, and we didn't last week. Yeah, here, here, just about sure with this 81 test fetch from the All Blacks calls it all on Sky Sport. Uh, I totally agree with you because, I mean, here I am sitting and looking at the draw and thinking the Hurricanes Chiefs on Saturday night, what a massive match. I mean, that is just a must-watch, and that, that is actually on the back of after the Warriors play. The following week, you get the Blues Brumbies. They need one of these every single week, and I, I don't know who does the draw. I mean, I'm sure whoever does the draw doesn't sit there and look at the NRL draw, but maybe, maybe they need to because these two competitions are competing for eyeballs over the weekend in this country. 
Yeah, they are. And and absolutely, the, they need to look at the draw. They need to factor everything in and making sure that as much as possible, our big matches don't clash with big matches um, of rugby league. And that people then know that for their weekend, they can sit down, have their structure and know that they're going to get um, you know, their, their couch filled with all sorts of sport. But when they have the big blockbuster weekends or massive matchups and big games, that they're not conflicting with other sport. So, yeah, you've got to be smart and I think you've got to think about holiday weekends and people being away and what they want to see and the fact that they don't have to go to work on a Monday like they usually would. So let's let's have some Sunday rugby. Equally, if it's a long weekend and Monday's off, you know, maybe throw a game on a Monday and a Thursday night or Friday's off, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yes, absolutely. I think they should be thinking much more ahead and really looking at how they can maximise the product. Rebels defying Australian rugby to find the competition. Four wins from seven. I don't know if this is their best ever season, but I mean, right at the moment, they're sitting there in fifth spot with four. I mean, yeah. they're having a cracking season, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They are. And I think probably when they looked at their draw and, and targeted a few games, they were thinking if they could get, be in this position coming up to, you know, the, the, the middle of the rounds with everybody having buys, they'd be really happy. They've managed to achieve that. Um, I'm actually quite fascinated at how they've managed to go about it and find themselves in that position because when I saw them in Palmerston North, they were a bit of a rabble, to be honest. They didn't play well. They they were a, a, absolutely outgassed, outgunned, outphysicaled, outsmarted by the Hurricanes who just completely put them to the sword. But yet here we find them, like you say, sitting in that position. So uh, I guess uh, Kevin Foote has to have... A huge amount of the credit goes towards him because the way he's managed his squad and the way that he's picked off his wins have put them in that position. So he's actually been really smart. Yeah, look, the, this is their share. This is their schedule. They lost to the Brumbies. They beat the Force. They beat MP. They lost to the Reds. As they thrashed by the Canes and beaten the Waratahs, and now put 41 points on the Fijian and Drew, who I thought were really disappointing over the weekend. And those two red cards kind of just summed up. That was just a team all out of sorts, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And I thought they pieced together a really good first half and then they completely lost their heads in the second half and two red cards and I think a yellow as well. They self-destructed, unfortunately. And if you're going to be competitive in this competition, which they are, so let's not take that away from No, no, no. Them, but you've also, you've also got to make sure that when, when you are in games that you don't self-destruct, that you keep the pressure on. And yeah, you might not win it, but you don't give it away. And I felt that's what they did at the weekend. They absolutely gave the game back to the Rebels when they were looking really good in that first half and just had too many periods of drifting out of the game, costing them points and then obviously costing them players off the field. And when you're dropping numbers like that and, and trying to compete against 15, you're never going to get on the right side of the scoreboard. So, yeah, very poor from their perspective because they, they have got the ability.